Good evening, everybody. Hope you are well. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We're just getting it shared across to a few places. Let me bring the comments up and I can say hello to a few people just while you're doing the sharing. Good evening, Mr. Randall. Hope you're good. Good evening, Belinda. Happy birthday for yesterday, I believe it was. Good evening, Mr. Sayer. Hope you're good. Good evening, John. Good evening, Carl. Hope you're well. Good evening, Karina. Hope you're good too. Uh, if you can do a bit of tagging, that would be greatly appreciated. Obviously, don't tag it to anywhere that's going to get yourself into trouble. Um, it's not worth the, the drama. Good evening, Catherine. Hope you're well. Good evening to Mr. McCutcheon. Hope you're good, buddy. Evening, uh, Ryan. Good evening to the beautiful Donna. Hope you're well. Beautiful Donna. <laughs> she paying you to see her, right? That's <laughs> that's the the way way nice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel awfully sorry for Donnie, you know, sometimes. It's got this little bit of a me too. <laughs> All right, who else have we just had jumping there? Good evening, uh, Dion. Yeah, good evening to Alan. Um, evening, Mr. Banks. Hope you're well. Um, good evening, Justin. Good Hi, evening, Marina. Good evening, Cole. Marina. Good evening, Marina. Hope you're well. Good evening, Jane. A bit of tugging going on. Good up, Scott. Uh -huh, Scott will get jealous. <laughs> oh. Do you remember that? Who, who was it? Was it Jürgen Klinsmann? No, it wasn't him. Oh, it was Ravinelli who used to hide these top hours. Yeah. Ravinelli, show you your belly. I should do that. I thought I'd best not. <laughs> evening, Danny. Evening, evening, Danny. Evening, Danny. Evening, Danny. Evening, Danny. Hope you're both well. Oh, I've had one of them days at work today, you know. What a shocker. But hey, most of the weekend. Even John. Hey, good evening to you both of you. Hope you're well. Trevor's doing a bit more tagging for us. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for showing the love. It means a lot. Yes. We'll get a few more people in and then we shall get cracking for the evening. Yeah, we are. Right. You give people a chance to see the bloody background, Chris. Oh. Shall I, evening, Mr. Sen. shall I kick us out for a second just so we can see Scott, actually? Scott in his Sunderland shirt. <laughs> Scott with his Sunderland shirt. You can see him just below his picture there with his little Sunderland top on. We'll just keep him out. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> and to do with me. Evening, Glenn. Hope you're good, mate. Good evening, um, Joseph. Joseph as well. Edward, <laughs> Edward found that funny, obviously. <laughs> well, did we miss anybody else? I don't think we have missed anybody. Yeah, I haven't got the screen up tonight. Oh, God, Scott, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh. It's all a bit of fun. Even David. Uh, Cheers, David. Been in the chair now, back to work. No, it's all, mate. You have a good um, evening at work, mate. Well, oh, I just can't wait for this week to be over. And then it's the countdown. Come down. Countdown. Mm. <laughs> Tune tune black and white army. You need to have Victor Donna if he's a Mackham. <laughs> Share around watching some beer garden. Oh, very must, nice. be, must be nice to be a Danny Talbot. Some trousers are a bit tight. <laughs> oh, feel like a newbie, Eddie Edwards. Had to, Sean, if you move to your left about three inches. <laughs> It matches his legs. <laughs> <laughs> the legs are just. <laughs> Should have put a black top on it, would have been even better then. You could just stand like. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have married a Mackham. <laughs> Evening, even Stephen. Oh, dear, that's well funny. It was nothing to do with me, though. I'm not claiming any. Anything, any sort of um, 
God, mine's gone blank. Any credit for for that? Well, that's on your stream yard, and you set up the stream yard tonight. I set up the stream yard, and it was already there. <laughs> And I got a message from um, one other person who's on the live tonight saying, who set the stream yard up tonight? That way. I, I, do, you know, do you know what? I think Sean's been busy tending to his vegetable garden. Mm. Sean, you can be honest with us. Was it Kelly really? What? They've done that picture. What picture? The one of the three of us in the back row. was it Kelly that's done all no. that work? No, she I didn't. Think it was. I think was it was for her. <laughs> and he says, Can I join the live? And then he's put joking, lads, have a good one. <laughs> this I imagine Danny sat in the beer garden now. He's probably on about his sixth pint. Hey, even Patsy, Karina, Chris did the review on the swag. Yeah, I did it a while ago, Karina. Um, it's a it's a useful liquid, should we say, for when you want a bit of a cheeky slide vape when, when you're not supposed to. Um, I'm not advocating having a vape on a plane or in hospitals or anywhere where you're not supposed to, supposed, supposed to vape, but um, they are very useful for that. Um, they're very, very high in PG, so they are a bit harsh on the throat, but, um, but the flavours are nice. Um, it just messes, messes with... Um, you head a little bit when you breathe out. Um, I constantly blow smoke rings all the time. Thanks for the picture, Danny. <laughs> Just sent me a picture of the beer garden with a with a pint. Um, it must be favoritism if you're getting sent pictures. Yeah. <laughs> um, that they, Karina. Yeah, it was Karina. Was um, yeah that they they are good for what they um, what the purpose of them really is for having a bit of a um, a ninja vape as, as I think a lot of people were calling it at the time. Um, you can indeed call. I'll get away with it. Um, could I get away with it on the train with these swag salts? One hundred percent. If you put the swag salts in an up ends, which is how I use them, uh, my up ends in the car at the minute. It looks like you're just chewing it on the end of a pen. You literally, if you um, take a draw on it and blows and sort of breathe out straight away, literally straight away, you do get a little bit of vapor. But if you hold it in for like a second, when you breathe out, there's nothing. Um, it needs yeah, to be fresh so, coil as well, though, doesn't it, Chris? Yeah, yeah, it would be. I wouldn't um, use them in, in with a coil that you've previously had anything in there. Not for the reason that um, it's going to do anything bad, but you are going to produce vapor until you've managed to pull all of the sort of historical juice through the coil. Um, Danny's put tell me that I use swag in my Nord on the trains. Yeah, they are. They're really good for for having a bit of a cheeky vape where you're not supposed to. Um, and things like the up ends are great because it just looks like a pen, doesn't it? So no one even takes a second glance at you. Sat on a train holding the pen. No worries at all. I don't even know if you can see mine. Yeah, mine are all down here. My swag salts. I think my favourite in them was the frost. Um, just a real basic, nice uh, menthol. Um, I think I've got about five or six of them. I think swag at work and no issues, yeah. So Justin's another one. Yeah, it's just a really good one. I mean, I I, I work in school, so it wouldn't really be um, appropriate for me to to use anything um, in the workplace. I mean, no, e-cigarettes are obviously banned from school premises and things, um, but you could, in theory, get away with it. But um, I don't use them at work. Um, my Austin Villa beat the shite London club. <laughs> Danny, we're not allowed football talk. Oh, Unless well, Scott's talking about Sunderland, then it's fine. You go, Gav's on the blue raspberry swag as we speak as well. Yeah, that they were really, really popular when they came out. I don't know if many people are still getting them off Pete or not. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was a bit of a novelty for some. Mm. They do Ooh, definitely have a late, didn't you? Shamiz, I'm late. <laughs> Just learning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, never tried swag. Who just put that mark? Yeah, that they, they are my best. Um, I don't know for 100% if this is true, but my belief is they are very, very high in, in propylene glycol um, and low in vegetable glycerin. Um, the PG is what normally carries your flavor in an A liquid, and your, your vegetable glycerin is what gives you the actual cloud. Um, so my, my 
theory behind how they work, they're just very high in PG. It doesn't say that on the box, though. It doesn't give you the, the mixture of the two liquids there. Um, I've got the full range. I only use when I'm at, when, when I'm at work. Um, how is it all done? You have a wonderful evening, mate. Um, have two or three points for me. I can't drink on a school night anymore. I feel rubbish for days, even if I just have two or three beers now. Well, are we going to do the um, what's everyone vaping on? Do you want me to start? You can do. Mine's really, really um, sort of a bit different this week. I'm obviously on this, but we're going to talk a bit more about these very soon. That's what I've predominantly been using for the past two weeks. Um, I've still got my little mouth along set up, my little K from like 2019 with a plain menthol in there today. And from last night, I am still using the fruit drops, orange and or blood orange and grapefruit. Got my moment blank then. Um, in my whatever this bloody tank is, um, the screamer RTA, um, RDA, sorry. Um, that's what I'm using at the minute. Um, well, that's it. What we're about to talk about as well, the Boost Plus with some beautiful Medusa HBM brew, but it's got a twist. I've added a bit of ice to it. It's been lovely. I've also got the tester of the Azor by Helvia 120 with me dead rabbits, RTA V2 with some beautiful fruity bone grape with a touch of ice as well. Just the two for me. And I am on Boost with Grapefruit and Blood Orange Fruit Drop. And the other Boost with Cherry and Mixed Berries Fruit Drop, Ooh, which, uh, nice. which I'm very grateful for because they're very nice. Just wait till you try the... Um, the blueberry and raspberry on ice. That's, oh, really nice. That's really a really nice juice really. as well, so you will like that. Hi, Cara. Let's have a look. So we've got Catherine is, is on her Medusa HBM brew, just like Scott. Um, perhaps you might want to try a little bit of ice in that, just like Scott said. That might elevate the flavours a bit for you. Um, Gavin's on his upends with his blue raspberry swag. Um, Give us our rainbow burst salts and our very shiny new ox fat. Ooh, did you give turn up to dear by any chance, Kim? Very nice. Uh, Jeff's on his pal three with his drumsticks in there. John Pierce cherry drops in his boost LE kit. Um, up ends with a blue raspberry salt for Edward. Um, raspberry bar in these velocity and lemon sherbs in the up ends for Mr. Goodwin. Carl Delaney is on Medusa Berry Lane on the Berry Lemonade on the Up Ox and on the Up Ox and Super Sweets drumsticks in these drag marks. Very nice. Yes. Stephen upends with the HBM salts. Uh, Kim's doing a bit of tagging. Good evening, Carl. I hope you're well. And I've lost where I was now. Good evening, Carl. Did you get that message in response to the question you asked? Is with the video, I did send you a reply, but I've heard nothing from you. Cora, so if you can let us know, and I can uh, move forward with that for you. We have Patsy on her white grape and peach in the Asmodus. Um, Karina's upend with black and grape. Don't tell Donna and Scott, otherwise it'll be wrong rubbing it off you. I'm past, I'm past the black and grape. And you're past we'll the black and grape. Wrong, but I'm, I've got some new favourites. And also with the up end with the Medusa Berry Lay Berry Lemon. I can't get lemonade out tonight. I keep twisting my tongue up. You can't get it open, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the with the strawberry custard. Trevor's on his velocity with super sweets jelly beans. Very nice. Mark is on the age of sex with lemon sherbs with an ice shot. Very nice. Um Gav says, I've tried the HBM brew with some ice. It was great once I got the right mix. Yeah. If you ever are going to start adding ice shots to things, add it slowly. Don't chuck yep. it all in one big go because you can't take it out once you've put it in. Exactly. You can always add a little bit more. 
We've got Tora on the Raspberry Bar Salt and Apal 3. Ooh, cracking bit of kit. Yeah. Um, I did. I've still to do a post. Just got in 20 minutes. Oh, hey, Kim. I wasn't too sure if it, you received it or not, darling. That's all. Um, good evening, Jeff. Good evening, Danny. Good evening, Rahul. Even now, even a mate. Yeah, so that's pretty much that cycle bit done. Kim's doing a mad tag there as well. Thank you very, very much, mate. Before we go any further, I would like to say a massive, massive thank you to Peter Jones for the platform that we're currently using. Without him, this wouldn't be possible. But also like to say a big thank you to Jabs and Danny Talibat yeah. uh, for reaching out to us to be part of their team to review specific products they send us hardware wise and um, so a massive massive shout out to jabs and danny talbot for that you know what i mean we're they're working alongside geek geek vape and um, we're hoping to do them proud in all the reviews we do for them without jabs danny and peter jones this would not be possible for the bearded brothers the tree the, the you know what I mean to do what we do so please show some love and support to the three gentlemen involved and spam some hearts please good evening Salam hope you're well mate hope you're really good oh dear well, I suppose we better think about getting cracking with um, all very generous people Stephen says yeah um, all of them are I've known Danny for years and years and years just through Facebook comments on live mm -hmm. going back a long, long time. Um, Danny's been around on the scene for good, a long good, time. Hardly. Yeah, really, really nice lad. But he's enjoying beer in the beer garden. All good points, lads. Hope yourselves. Yeah, I'm good, Salam. Thank you very much. Um, just looking forward to All Friday, right. to be honest with you. <laughs> really can't bloody wait. Oh. So... Which two devices have you got then, Sean? Because you obviously got the LE kit as well, haven't you? And then you've obviously got um, is it the original boost that you've got as well? The original boost. Yeah. And the luxury edition. Boost. Yeah. But they're exactly the same. Yeah. Just with no. different, different cars in the LE kit. And you've got the luxurious edition slightly bigger than the original boost. Because I think I think there's a slight size difference. No, same. And the same ones, I thought they were slightly, yeah. thought they were slightly, like in between the plus and the the original. No, same. I've never had the boost. I'm I'm guessing it's just that they they call it the luxurious edition because you get all the all the coils with all it. The coils, yeah. Um, and I think that perhaps the sort of stitching or something. I so is the shape exactly the same, Sean? And yeah, it's all exactly the same. It's all exactly the same. Yeah. So it's just the, the, yeah, yeah, the comparisons of the, of the two, like Sean. Mm. Yeah, no, exactly the same. Yeah. And you've got the boost plus, haven't you, Scott? I've got the boost for me fat hands. Yeah. <laughs> and I've obviously got the boost look um, LE edition as well. That's the one, that's the only one I've got. Um, but I suppose we can talk a bit about what, sort of, what we've been doing with them over the past couple of weeks, I suppose, can't we? Um, what I've specifically done is, um, I think it was two weeks, two weeks ago tonight, wasn't it, that we did the unboxing and just sort of went through what sort of was, was actually, yeah, to, sort of what was actually coming the, in the difference, <coughs> what the difference between mine and Scott was. Obviously, he's got the external battery, mine's internal battery, and I got the sort of five calls of mine. Um, what I sort of said on that live and what I've been able to achieve is I've gone through. Um, the four different coils that come with it. I'm not going to go through all the different sort of watches and stuff or the um, different rates of the coils. We can sort of have a look at that sort of um, a bit later on. But what I've done is I've done um, a thousand hits on each of the coils um, and then just, just changed it over to a different one so I could try all of the different coils. Um, and every one of those thousand hits, the flavor is just as good as when I first put it in. I've not had any drop in flavour. There's no burnt taste or anything like that. Um, so for coil life, for me, um, they are still going unbelievably strong after a 1,000 hits without 
even the mildest little sort of hint that there's any flavour dropping or anything like that. Um, I have got some favourite, some favourites within the coil range, but we can sort of talk a bit more about that um, once we go to the live a little bit more. I think. Um, but generally, I've really, really enjoyed using the Boost LE kit for the last two weeks. Um, I've dropped it a number of times by mistake. Um, I've done all sorts of bits and pieces with it, um, and I've not had any problems with, with mine at all. It's not scratched or marked up or anything when I've dropped it. Um, it's just been a really solid solid piece of kit. Um, that's a bit of a summary of sort of how I've found mine for the past couple of weeks. I don't know how you found yours, Scott. Well, over the past couple of weeks, um <laughs> Mine's been thrown about like a lunatic because I'm in and out the van and whatnot with work and it's fell out my pockets, fell out my, my man bag and whatnot, my vaping bag, shall I say. Um, I, I've used the 0.4 coil, which is your 28 to 33 watts. It only goes for a maximum of 40 watts anyway, uh, but I have used... This is my second bottle of Medusa in two weeks that I've used. And I've used the first coil that came pre-installed, which is the 0.4. I got 1141 puffs out of that one before it dies, which is phenomenal. Um, got some more coils, again the 0.4. I finished last of the 100 mil off. Perfect on that coil. I got it up with 1302 puffs. Now, this is me halfway through my second bottle now, and I've put my third coil in. I've been around the counter once already, so I'm up to 1146 puffs on this coil here. But the difference is that I've added a bit of ice into this juice so overall i'm getting well over a thousand puffs per coil uh which is absolutely fantastic for a stock coil um battery life on it is perfect i seem to be i put in 18650 in there a molly cell fully charged i seem to get about a day and a half out of a full charge battery which is good, you know what I mean? Because I do clean it a lot, especially mm. when driving, because it's boredom, constantly vaping. See a car, say, oh, yeah, hi, him a cloud. You know what I mean? As you do. <laughs> you know, but I've tried using it, I've tried using it in a mouth to lung mode by closing the airflow air right down and also using it as a direct lung. And I kind of, there's only one fault I found with this device but i will go into more detail later on in the live in regards to the pros and cons on the actual pro but overall it's been dropped as you can see past the lot you know what i mean but and overall i kind of felt it like you know what about you sean have you sort of found Found it. Uh, well, unfortunately, obviously, when you done the unboxing, I was working away. Then I had a chest infection, so I haven't really been vaping. Um, so I haven't used the new one as much, but I already had a boost anyway. I've had it for about a year now, and it's still in perfect condition. It's been dropped, chucked about, chucked in bags, everything, and it looks brand new still. Mm. Coil life, amazing. Um, yeah, just great to hold in the hands. Really nice device overall. I can't go into it as much as obviously Chris can because obviously he's thoroughly used it with all the different coils, which I haven't. I've only got the 0.4 coil in here and the 0.6 in this one. But as I say, coil life's been great on the one that I had originally. So. So a few people asking about the battery life there. Scott could have mentioned the battery life on his. Obviously, mine's an, an internal battery on here. I think they're from memory. Is it 500 milliamp hour battery? 600. Uh, 600 milliamp hour battery. 
um, inside it. Um, I, I, depending on what coil I've been using, and um, when I'm using the 1.2 mouth to lung coil, um, I'm getting two days out of that, and I absolutely cane it. Um, when I'm starting to put more of the direct to lung coils in there, the 0.4, the 0.6s, and the 0.3. I'm getting roughly about a day out of it. Um, that's if I'm just using that one device. Um, I'm sure that a lot of people are very much the same as me, Scott and Sean. We've, we, you've always got multiple devices sort of on the go, but I've tried to be really, really um, sort of stringent. And apart, unless I'm doing the reviews and sometimes a bit of mouth lung just with some plain menthol and that one, I have been using this pretty religiously for the past two weeks. Um, and the battery life, I can't fault it. Um, for a little internal battery mod, I was panicking a bit. Uh, the first day I took it away, thinking oh, I'm, I'm going to have to put it on charge at lunchtime or something, but definitely not. Um, for some reason, um, the battery life is lasting a lot long longer, a lot longer than what I ever expected it to um, for any sort of 600 milliamp hour battery inside there. Um, it's phenomenal battery life on them. I think if you're cane in the direct along coils. Um, and you're constantly on it if you're driving around a lot and it's constantly in your hand, then you may need to charge it. But I think roughly from completely flat to fully charged is just over an hour for me. Um, yeah. So it's not a big issue either if you do have to put it on charge. Um, I, no, I haven't tried it, but I know a lot of pod systems you can vape on them whilst they're actually charging um as well if you are desperate but i've not tried it with this one but you can always plug it in for half an hour get yourself a little bit of battery life in there actually have a vape on it and then and then plug it back in it's not going to do any any sort of issues to the battery inside it just by sort of half charging it um and then using it but i've been really impressed with the battery life on it um do you want me to go through which coils i've sort of found the best scott of the ones which i've used you, th um, you can do if you want to yeah. do your full pros and cons yeah. or... I mean, um yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll just sort of talk about the coils to start with. Obviously, I got the, the LE kit, and it comes with um, 2.4 ohm coils, um, two 0.4 ohm coils. Um, it comes with a 0.3 and a 0.6. Um, my favorite coils um, by far were the 0.4, um, but for me, um, this massively, massively stands out to me as an absolute fantastic model and device with a 1.2 ohm coil in there. Um, I've been using um, some Nick salts in here. Um, when I'm using the mouth to lung, I've been on the old um, reducer lemon sherbs in there. Um, flavor's been great, batch life has been great um, and everything. I then obviously tried the, the sort of more direct lung coils and I moved over to a 70, 30 um, piece. I went for the um, lemon, lemon sherbs in the smashed it slush. Great flavor comes through there as well. Um, I haven't really got any negatives about any of the calls. It's all personal preference for me. Um, I think I like the point four because um, the bore on the coil is sort of a nice balance between the two. The point three is ever so much slightly a wider bore. Um, and then you go down the point six. And for me, the point six is a bit too restricted for a direct to long hit, a really restricted direct to long hit. So my two calls for me. Um, would be the point four, which comes pre installed with and also a spare. But for me, my favorite coil and favorite way of using this device is to virtually close. I mean, I can bring up the camera, but you probably won't be able to see. I've got the tiniest amount of um, airflow open on the airflow control ring there. It's literally probably, I don't know, not even a mil um, sort of in the diameter. So it's, it's pretty much as close as you can get it to being closed without it being closed. Um, and it's just been absolutely outstanding. Um, the only negative that I've come with this, um, and we were having a chat before, and, and I think we've all come up with a very similar negative, is um, being able to see how much juice you've got. Um, as you'll see there on the top um, with the actual pod device, with the actual pod there, um, they do have the, um, the bung in them, which then restricts it down to a 2 mil capacity, which is obviously part of the regulations from the TPD um or the whatever you want to call it. it's not actually tpd anymore it's called the uk rpr or something like that um and that makes it very very hard to see how much juice you've got on it you literally have to hold it up to a light and even then it's quite tricky sometimes to see how much juice you've got in there um but that's the only 
negative that I could have. Um, I like the fact that it comes with a top cup wherever I've put it. It's probably in the kitchen on the side. So I can put a little top cap over. I can chuck it in my work bag and I'm not worried about getting bits of fluff and rubbing down the actual drip tip as well. Um, drip tip wise, of the two of them, I probably prefer the, the more round style for when I'm doing the mouth to lung. And then when I'm doing the more direct lung, I've been changing over to the more sort of duck bill sort of shape one. Um, but in general, um, I'm not a massive pod user. I prefer my big devices, dual dual triple battery devices, big tanks on the top of them, quite high wattage, or sort of mouth to lung sort of dual battery devices as well. But for a pod kit, um, I've been really, really impressed with it. Um, really, really impressed. And Just go back to your airflow, Chris. Yeah. With um, pods, a lot of the airflow adjustments are on coils nowadays. Yeah. There's no way to put the airflow. So yeah. on these, with the airflow just being on the front there, is really good. Because like I said, a lot of them are on the coils nowadays. You yeah. have to take the pod off and adjust it, put it back, yeah. make it, oh, no, that ain't right. But yeah. with this, the airflow just on the front there, really easy to adjust. Yeah. Which the one thing which I like about the airflow as well is it's not a really, really loose ring either. So you're not going to no. be changing the airflow by mistake. You know, like some, some devices you get the airflow ring is more like a bloody fidget spinner that they're that easy to move these are just right there's, there's enough resistance there so so you can actually feel that you are moving something mm -hmm. but it's also not super tight or super loose it's it, i can't think of, of any negatives really apart from being able to see how much juice i've got in there that's the only yeah. downside now whether if i got the big air three points whatever three point is it three point eight or three point seven seven mil pod without the bung in there um i'm not advocating pulling bungs out um of pods because sometimes it can cause issues i can't see why it would cause an issue with this one so i probably will give it a go of pulling the bung out um just so i can actually sort of see the juice level a bit better um but i'm not advocating pulling bungs out of things because it does cause issues on some devices that's my sort of roundup of my two weeks with it Thoroughly impressed, great bit of kit. If you haven't got one, get one. Yeah. Mine's just the same as Chris. The seat, <laughs> the, you know, the pod, yeah. not being able to see the juice levels. And maybe the airflow adjuster, if the insert was a different color. Because if you're, you know, if you, mm. you have to get really close to see or in a good light to see that yeah. you've adjusted it. So maybe a different color in there so you can see clearly. Well, your airflow's on. Yeah, Other than that, yeah. Yeah, been, point out, Sean. Really yeah, if that was silver or something, maybe on the inside of there to match the, the top yeah. bit, or like a gunmetally color or something, just so yeah, there was a bit of a difference in the well, colors. Like right, a shade would be perfect because, like yeah. you say, you could you could be working night shift as a driver, and you want to change your airflow, and you know, you want to take your eyes off the road, so you can just switch it with your foam. And you'd be able to see the, the colour contrast, you know yeah. what I mean, like a colour, which would be more beneficial, like, you know. Which, which is a good shout, like, I must admit. Mm. A few people say I managed to get mine out. Cannot take the bung out. Can you not take the bung out? You, you can do, Trevor, but... Um, it's not something it, we, we promote no. as reviewers. Um, because you, heaven forbid, you took the bung out, and next thing you know, it, it, the insides flooded with your juice because you've stretched the, the you've stretched it too much, or you've went in too hard and you've chipped a bit yeah. and it's causing leakages. It's going to come back on us. We do not recommend you take the bung out. You can actually buy um, the bigger pods without the bungs in. But you've got to look for them in yeah. various places, um, which is your non TPD version uh, pods that you need. All TPD versions will have the bones in because of the laws before we left the AU. And you know what I mean? It's all politics and whatnot. So we're not really getting the politics, politics side mm -hmm. on the line. But you can actually buy the pods without the bones in, but them are the non TPD versions. Just have a look on Google, you know what I mean? You'll be able to find them somewhere. Or even check with your local vape shops. They might have them in. 
You know what I mean? It's mm. all you've got to do. One thing you mentioned then, Scott, leaking. I've not had a single, single drop of liquid come out of this pod onto the base of the unit, um, onto the actual main. It's still bone dry in there. Yeah. Uh, I've not had any condensation buildup in there. I've not had any juice going to there or anything, um, which has been a massive pro for me because pod systems are renowned for being leaky. Um, but this one hasn't. I've not had a single drop come out anywhere. There's me. As you can see, bone dry. The good thing about these... Uh, this being the plus, they will have, as you can see, you've got it's very hard. This is, I've only got a couple of downfalls on this. First one, as Chris said, and Sean said, you cannot see the juice flow in there because of the darkness. Excellent placement with the coils, you've got the straight parts of the coil there. As you can see, which links straight with the bits of plastic either side, so you know you're putting the coil in the right way. On the base of the coil, it does tell you the ohm of the coil and what wattage you should be doing it just at the outside of the, the orange ring there, so you know which one's which. Yeah. I've been using the duck lip, as uh, Chris calls it. This may be more of a, a direct long stroke restricted. Um, direct lung with if airflow fully open but as as i said as soon as you start twisting that you can't really tell when you're twisting it you know what i mean so change the disc on that that would be absolutely fantastic the placement everything of the the pod getting it in is absolutely fantastic not one bit of leakage condensation build up or anything which is absolutely fantastic 0.3 coil on this i've been using it's 30 watts and as you can see as you can see i've actually got the wattage locked as well which is another good pro also as you can see i've got the red case on it but you've got four screws either side you can actually change them You've got to buy them, like you know, so you can change them colors, which is another good thing. And I am a red person, if goes wrong, but blue and whatnot, loads of different colors you can get. Um, one thing I haven't used and I don't need to use unless there is a firmware update is a nice little design where you've got the battery charging port, mm. but you also use that to plug the wire in to attach to your computer to do a firmware update software update on the device as and when needed absolutely fantastic how it's all covered in place everything fantastic um the one one downside i did have on this with this being external 18650 battery there's a little lever there that you've got to pull down the twist to undo the battery there's been a couple of times i've twisted a little bit too hard and i've almost snapped that part there so i'm hoping you can be able to look at this and think is there another way of doing it i know a lot of companies have the um pull along and snap down yeah. which is no good because once you drop that it just bursts open and yeah. you tear the chip off that and not long again the twist mechanism is fantastic don't get us wrong but the, i think you need to need to do something di a, bit, a bit different to that little bit of metal hang like it does fold up don't get us wrong so it's all concealed away but i would like it something different you know what i mean for mm. those because i I'm heavy handed. I didn't want to snap it and that's it broke. One thing I highly recommend you never, ever, ever do is with any external battery devices is use the charging port to charge your batteries. It's the biggest no no ever. Take your batteries out and charge them externally. Much safer, much better, and more efficient. Mm. 
Mm. As soon as you start doing that, you're going to cause a lot of problems for the battery and the circuit boards inside the devices. Yeah, I mean, but, I... Well, well, overall, with this device, 0.3 coil is fantastic. I would like. I would like a bit more wattage of a coil for the juice I'm using, but that's a personal preference. The 0.3 coil going up to 33 watts, um, perfect for your 50-50s, and drop it down a bit for your solids as well. Mouth to lung. Yes, coughing out lung and all. <laughs> but I would... I would the only things I'll change about this, in all honesty, is the transparency of the pod, so you can see the, the juice level you've got in there, or install software to the devices where it gives you an indicator when the juice is low, like there is on certain other devices, which we'll not go into. If that, that was a, a bit of technology added to these devices, it would be fine with you not being able to see what's in the tank because it will tell you your, your juice is low. Something to think about Geek Vape. And again, the bottom, how you take the batteries in and out, I would like to see something different in there. Mm. What I, I don't know. Even if it was just like a little shirt, what you use, like uh, you get the little toolkits. And you put it in quarter turn and it drops out. Mm. You yeah, get it's going to be water resistant though, hasn't it? So it's got to be yeah, secure I mean, because they're all water and dust. Yeah, that, that's that's um, why they design them like that is to make them that IP IP sixty seven. I think they call it, isn't it? Which makes them dust proof, shock proof, and and waterproof. Obviously, the actual pod itself. If you drop that in water, the device will be fine, but your coil will still be knackered in there. There's no two ways around that. The water's going to get down the top here. If, even if you have the, the, the little cover on there, the water is still going to get in there and it's going to knock your coil, but your device itself should still be fine. Um, and I think that's why they've designed the battery door like they have on that, Scott. I mean, our, our opinions slightly differ on a single battery mod. I, I personally would be quite happy charging that to the USB cable because it's a single battery. If it was a dual battery, 100% no. But as a single battery, if I was out somewhere and didn't have a spare battery with me, as an emergency, I, I, I would still feel relatively safe plugging a USB cable into that because it's single battery. If it's a dual battery, I wouldn't do it. But with a single, I, would, I wouldn't like to do it all the time. But as a bit of an emergency, if I was out at a friend's house, didn't have a battery, and they had their, their um, micro USB cable there, I probably would just stick it on charge. I wouldn't leave it. Sort of, I wouldn't pull it, put, plug it in on charge, walk away and leave it overnight or anything. You should never do that with any device or any batteries at all. But with it being a single battery, as an emergency, I, I would feel relatively happy just giving that a quick charge for half an hour or something just to boost the battery up a bit. Um, but that's only because it's a single battery device, not a dual. Um, some dual battery devices do have battery balance and software in them now as well in the chip. But even still, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend doing it. It's okay as an emergency if you need a bit of power and you're out and about somewhere, but not as a regular thing. You're far better just doing doing it, as Scott says, taking the battery out, stick it in the battery charger, which then sort of looks after the battery a lot better. Um, if you've got a decent battery charger, it's going to do the different ampage sort of charges, the battery cycling through its charge just to try and sort of lengthen the life of that battery. Whereas if you're just pumping two amps or whatever straight into it in one go it is going to start knocking your battery up a little bit but just as a one-off emergency at a mate's house or whatever i'd be quite happy plugging my cable in there even gary <laughs> there we go now i've stopped talking just just go back to the pods again um yeah. i think something a lot of us missed is how secure they are as well yeah. that pod is not coming off of there no. that, it really puts some thought into how it clips yeah. in and how secure it is when it just yeah. clips in yeah uh, that's not going anywhere no 100 percent. no you see there is a device out there that has got the quarter turn um mechanism for the single battery which is right. dust proof waterproof drop proof for the lot yeah i think this one's i've got i mean I think it's better than the old slide doors. I'm not going to... Oh, 100%. These sort of like little floppy around things and everything. Yeah. 
because as soon as you drop that, it your battery's off down down the bloody pavement, your battery wrapped on that kid. You don't really want to be using the battery again. So at least if you drop that, at least it's still going to be say relatively secure in there. Um, I mean, I don't mind those style battery. I'm just trying to. I haven't got nothing else. I mean, you've got similar things like on the bottom of this one. Um, obviously, this isn't waterproof or anything. Um, I quite like those battery doors. I yeah. can see what Scott's saying. It could be easy yeah. to over tighten it, or it could be easy yeah. to cross thread it. I'm guessing if you don't yeah. get it quite right when you cross thread it, then that's knackered, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it, 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 I have almost cross threaded it once or twice. Don't get us wrong. Yeah. And then when tighten this, you know what I mean? No, not knowing your own strength, you mm. can twist it. And I felt a bit play in the the little lever. Once that lever goes, you're knackered. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean you're going like to need, you, you need a full new door for it, and then you've got to get in touch with Geek Vave. Yes, I was a tit over tight. It snapped the arm, so I need a new battery door. Could just kind of buy one, you know, what I mean? because it's it's not something that's going to be easy sourced in the UK. You want to have to go to direct to Geek Fear mm. in China to get them. Um, but on on the other hand, if they thickened thickened that bit of metal slightly or used a, a different material to have it a bit more reinforced, fine. You know what I mean? There is other ways of keeping that design, but there's other ways of improving it. Yeah. A more sturdier bit of material. You know what I mean? Because it's a bit of a aluminum fold over a few times by the looks of it. What, what's it like to get out anyway, Scott? Because obviously if you haven't got nails or, you know, it's your fingers are easy. easy, is it, you know, is there quite a bit of a recess there to flick it up or? Is it T very very tiny little gap there mm. okay and if you yeah. chew your nails you know what I, mean? Yeah. I mean i 100 prefer that style battery cap than to sort of those ones that you've got to get like a coin into or have a special yeah. tool very similar sort of idea it's it's just it's securing the battery in but at least that has got that little latch that does come up so you have got something to we're sort of tightening it down and everything. Um, I think it's just what Scott was saying. It's just being aware of not to over tighten it. But we just need to sort of make it snug and 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 that's it. Um, Sean's decided to do one for some reason. I don't know why. No, he's just he's just had a, a message. All oh, right. Um, Again, there is that little slot there in the centre that I was on about that you can stick a coin into or a screwdriver to screw it. But it's also got the ho two holes in the bottom to prevent the battery from venting. Yeah. They are just good, solid bits of kit. Um, as you all know, I mean, I do quite a bit of fishing. Um, when the weather's nice, I do anyway. Um, that's the definitely other, down with me. The other th good thing the three were missing again, I've just remembered myself, is the top fill capacity, yeah. which is perfect yeah. for top fill. Your bottom fills is where you tend to find your most leakages on all pods from the bottom fill because the bones do a road's not the right word, but um, when you keep on pulling them in and out, it just shaves a tiny, tiny bit off all the time, which gives it the chance for the the anic ridge stroke salts to seep out and mess with all your um internals batteries and the circuit boards and whatnot so the way they've done it as well you don't really need big nails to get into the into the film port either the, no. other, the good thing about it it's a good size film port as well where so much yeah. so minute and a proper nightmare to get into where this is absolutely fantastic how they've made it into a top fill because if i remember rightly the original booster's bottom fill isn't it yeah, it was, and that was quite renowned for leaking as well, wasn't it? So the, uh, the old bottom fill. Yeah, both of them are on top fill. Yeah, I think there was one. Yeah, there was one that was bottom. Yeah. The original, original one was bottom yeah. fill. I remember rightly. Have so you found though, when you've been filling it that sometimes you overfill and you get the juice coming out yeah. because you can't see how much juice you've got in it? 
that's something somebody put in the comments earlier as well that that's a problem they found with it. They would always overfill. Yeah. You, you have to tilt it. You have to tilt it, and, and even then, it's really, really hard. You've got to sort of hold it up to the light, don't you? And just see. So yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter with if you spill a bit of juice, you just get a bit of kitchen roll, don't you? I mean, we've always got bits of kitchen roll lying around everywhere. <laughs> we've, been there. we've always over dripped on tanks and bits and pieces, and you're pulling your cotton out or whatever, just because it's a messy desk up. But yeah, that's. That's again is just to do with the colour of that sort of of the actual pod, isn't it? That's what's causing a lot of the issues is just that inability to see how much juice you've got in there at any time. I must admit, even going up uh, in your eleven hundred puffs on on this point three coil at thirty watts, the flavour is on point every yeah. single time. You do get the initial shitty taste, which is your burnt coil. That's how you know when, when it's ready to gun. Mm -hmm. When it's gun, you start getting that horrible, dirty, shitty taste. Is that how it is? But, you know, with these, the little trick I do, because it's so compact into there, what I tend to do, you shouldn't do it like, but just at the edge of there, you can just get you in between yeah. the coil and give it a slight little nudge. Oof. And out of pops, you know what I mean. If you haven't, got, if you haven't got nails, yeah, I mean, then you take the pod off and click it back into place. You always ask it if it's a new or an old pod, which is a good thing. So then the, yeah. the system knows if you've just installed a brand new coil or the same coil that you've already had on for the past X mm -hmm. amount of time. But if you don't so want to do that, that you get, that. you're getting over four thousand. Puffs in a coil, yeah. surely not. Any uh, different coils perform in different ways. A certain product I was I was reviewing not long ago. The first coil installed, I got 111 puffs out of that one. Mm. The second coil, I got this just just over 100. The third coil I put in, I got under 100. But then I put a fourth coil in using the same juice. I got over 11, uh, 1500 on the fourth coil. The thing is, people seem to forget is when coils are being made, they're made in mass production. Mm -hmm. So there could be hundreds of thousands of, of these coils made per day. You're all going to find the odd one that you're going to have a problem with. The way technology is evolving right now, it's going from your, your wrap coils to know your mesh coils. And the way you're playing the market at the minute is there's different states of mesh coils out there. And by that is is how the mesh is designed to fit the full cotton. If you strip one of these coils down and you see the way the pattern is and the ratio of cotton and coil gives you an equal burning burning field. You know what I mean? Um, there is one tank I have used First coil I used, and I got uh, 9,569 puffs out of one coil. And that tank is the, one of the best woman tanks I've ever, ever owned. And I've owned quite a few. You know what I mean? Edward's just put a comment there. Some people are saying they get over 4,000 puffs in a coil. Surely not. Edward, I actually, oh, as I throw it around on the floor, I'm like, I've done with this. Um, it is, it's, it, it, it's all very dependent on what juice you're using in it. If you've got a juice that's got a lot of sweetener in it, a very sweet juice, then you're not going to get 4,000 4, puffs out on it. If you're using a juice that isn't packed full of sweeteners or anything like that, it's quite possible because that's one of the biggest coil killers ever is the sweetener that people put or sweeteners in, in juices. Um, so I can believe that. Um, Ronnie's put there the charge port. Charge port goes on them. I've got a broken one in, in the drawer. It doesn't charge anymore. Ronnie, was that the... Um, Sort of LE with the built-in battery, or was that the external battery one, the Boost Plus, that you're having the problem, the problems with? Um, that's another good thing that Scott's saying there about using an external battery. It does protect your USB. I mean, I've only yeah. had two weeks. Um, I've not come across any problems with it. It's not something which I've heard a lot of people say um, about the USBs on them. Um, no. Possibly in the future. If they did upgrade this, I would say come away from the from micro USB and go to USB C. 
Um, you're going to get a much faster charger. But when these originally came out, USB-C was wasn't really that massive in the vape in the vape scene. Was it? It seems to have come a lot more sort of over the past six months. I mean, these are what, about a year old now, something like that. Yeah, because I've had this one about a year. Yeah, What's no, the LE, the LE edition. Um, yes, built in battery. Um, Is yeah. this one the edition? I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking about the actual sort of general boost, the actual boost in the LED edition because the coil the, isn't it? The, the, original, the original boost came out. Uh, you're talking about two years ago. Mm. The first time a boost came out about two years ago. Yeah. I'm talking about the other one that Sean's got. I don't know what the actual, the actual. Yeah, this is just exactly the, boost, the same, but not the LED. And doesn't come with the coils. Um, when he says, "Yeah, built-in battery." Yeah, it's, I think it's just been being a bit careful with with them. At the end of the day, these are not massively expensive devices. I mean, what, what are these retail for? 30, 35 quid, something like that. The 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 luxurious edition is forty five pound. Forty five quid. Let's say forty five quid. Now, the way that I, that, that I look at things, in perhaps it's the wrong way of looking at it. If I was still on on the stinkies, I'd be paying twelve quid a day for a packet of products. So I look at that. If that lasts me two months, let's say, it's, it's going to last me longer than that. But forty-five quid for two months. Imagine how much I would have spent. Yes, I know I've got to buy the liquid and the coils and bits and pieces like that. But that, but this one here comes with five coils. You're going to be getting a couple of thousand puffs. So let's say that this is going to be enough coils to last you six weeks. So let's say the whole thing lasted you six weeks. What's that cost you a day? A pound a day, something like that. And, and it's worth it just for this. Yeah, because Scott hasn't got one of them. <laughs> just for this. Yeah, that, that's that's the way that I look at them, Ronnie. I've, I mean, I've got devices down here that were two, three hundred quid and stuff like that. Now, obviously, if that broke, then I'd be a bit more sort of upset. But the way I look at something like that, if, if, if I got a couple of months from that, then it decided to break, I wouldn't see that as the end of, um, as the, end of the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, because for me, I don't think this would be, you know, something I'd use every day. I'd have like my main one, and this is just like a backup mm. sort of pod mod. Um, it wouldn't be my main user. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mm. think. See, whereas I could quite happily have this as my main user as a mouth to lung. I'm being honest with you. Um, Ronnie, if you want, drop us a message after the live, and I'll have a bit crack with you. I'll, I'll, I will help you all the way. Um, I know a few, I've got a few contacts I can put you in touch with to help you as well. So, Ronnie, drop me a message after. Do you want know, a reply to you now? Know, the message. Um, as Jeff put there, good for salt on car journeys. Yeah, I mean, I predominantly 90% of my vaping is mouth to lung using salts or 50 50 mixes um purely because i don't like blowing big big clouds when i'm driving um and also because working in schools obviously i need to do a when i do vape um and sort of go and hide around the corner where all the dirty smokers are and everything um i just don't like the idea of blowing, blowing big clouds when i'm at home sat in, the, sat in the back garden or on the balcony or whatever then yeah i will do a bit of sort of of homing or sort of using my mouth, um, sorry, direct to lung RTAs and things, but um, I just sort of find that for me, mouth to lung is what suits my, my style of open these days. Well, there you go, that's come up on screen, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, what, what, what is the average lifespan of a of a sort of pretty bog standard vape mod pod mod, I'd say it is probably like sort of three to six months, isn't it? And there isn't many devices out there which are going to last forever. Um, I guess it depends on the battery, really, doesn't it? Yeah, it depends on the battery. Depends how you treat it. Fifteen hundred um, milliamp battery. What would that be for an external battery? How long would you keep that for? After a certain amount of charges. Yeah, and again, it all depends on, on how much you've hammered the battery. If you're pushing it to its limits all the time, then you're obviously going to start degrading the chemicals in, in the battery. Whereas if you're 
like maybe vaping on 10, 15 watts or whatever like that, then obviously I'm, I'm not hammering that battery as much. So I'm going to get a longer battery or more cycles out of that battery than what, um, than what somebody who's pushing it right to like 25 amp sort of discharge on the battery sort of all the time, absolutely pushing mm -hmm. it to its limits. But, um, um, I like the little pods to be fair. Yeah. Um, how did Pico for nearly two years? Yeah. I mean, some of them do last, um, a long, long time. I've got some mods that I've had for two or three years, um, and are still going strong. Um, but it is, it is normally things like the on these devices, it is normally things like the USB connections that do start going wrong. And but people vary, don't they? Obviously, like Jeff said, yeah. if you get six months out of it, it'd be happy, but then yeah. other people would purchase one of these and they'd want it to last a lifetime. Yeah, you know, we're realistically it's not going to. No, they are yeah. indestructible. You, you can drop them, they you know, they don't mess up and stuff like that. You can put them in water, but one day it's going to stop. Yeah. If anybody would like to treat themselves to a nice little gift, there's two items I'm going to show you quite right now. Um, that you can head over to discountelitwords.co.uk. You've got this one here, which is the luxurious edition, which both Chris and Sean have got. So you get the luxurious edition with five coils, and this is two two main pod. And then you get the full range of Fantasia. You can have a choice of having it, the ice range, which is the mango, strawberry, orange, cherry, and watermelon. Or you can have it with no ice, which is exactly the same flavors without ice. And that's at a banging price of £60. What a good that. Cracking little price. That. So you're getting 500 ml of juice. 15 quid a bottle, so that's 30, 60, that's 75 quid's worth of juice straight away, and then you get the, basically the pod free. Uh, Scott said the pods are 45 on their own. Yep. Yeah. And the luxury yeah. edition, remember, you get the key ring with it as well. You get the nice little key ring, which is worth it just for that. So. And then there is... Yeah. Now, Sean will back us up on this because this is a cracking bit of kit again. Which is the Ages Legend Zeus? I'm sure you've got the legend, haven't you, Sean? I have, yeah. That's is that the original, the original legend. This is a Zeus one, so it's the one after the original, because you get the Zeus so warm that's tank. The one, that's the one with the Zeus branding on the handle, isn't it? I didn't I have that. One. I, had, I had the original one, but indestructible again. Amazing mm -hmm. bits of kit. So you get the Ages Legend there, but you also get the full range of super sweets, your drumsticks, bubblegum blue, strawberry laces, minty chew, jelly beans, and strawberry laces. That's 600 ml of juice, and that's 90 quid. Again, 15 quid a bottle. So yeah. you pay them for the full range of super sweets, and yeah. you get the hardware free. And it's a cracking bit of kit again. Yeah, it's a full, full kit, isn't it? Yeah. It is a full kit indeed. So you're all ready to go. Just bang your batteries in. As you can yeah. see in the bottom corner, you get the two mil tank. And all that is available on discounted e-liquids.co.uk. You certainly will, Danny. Danny, before um, next weekend, though, send me a message to remind me just to make sure that I put all my coils and bill kit and all that sort of stuff in my uh, bag for when we're down next to the mate. Why, why do you just keep on mentioning this key ring? Because you haven't got one? <laughs> oh, he has got oh, one. He, oh, he has got one now, hasn't he? Because he got himself an LED kit. He's, well, bloody, he? he's got one, isn't he? Yeah. Well, here we go. He's got a showing off the bag. bag. He's strapping his T-shirt. Do, do you like how he positioned the bag as he walked on? Like, <laughs> walked like the that. Down, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Oh, we haven't opened it though. So oh, it they were, they're in a key ring in there. We told them to take it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We called um, China up and said, uh, take, take the key ring out of Scott's one. Did it? Did it? Did it? Did it? Karina, they probably will stock batteries again, but obviously there's a bit of um, a shortage on batteries. There's a shortage everywhere on batteries at the minute. 
massive shortage. Um, virtually all battery retailers, wholesalers are all really struggling. Um, just be careful where you do buy your batteries from. Make sure you're getting them from a trusted site because there is a lot of fake batteries out on the market at the minute. Um, I did an email from one of the bigger companies who distribute batteries in the UK um, saying that the UK market has had a massive influx of counterfeit batteries. So be really careful because they if just take one want... ones and rewrap them. If you do want batteries, please drop one of us through your message. There is reputable companies that we use. Mm. What every Friday, the code is sent to people that are signing up to this website that yeah. offers you a discount on their products. I highly rate them. I've done a lot of business with them, and I will always do business with them because it's a very, very highly reputable, reputable company. A lot of vapors use them. Mm. I'm more than happy for you to contact me this Friday and say, right, I need some batteries. I'll send you a link to the right battery that you need. Yeah. I'll also send you the discount code as well. You can go click that link, add as many as you need to the basket, add the discount code, and get it shipped directly to your door. Bish yeah. bash box, job yeah. done. That company yeah. you're talking about, Scott's really struggling themselves with batteries at the minute. I had a look the other day. Um, it's just a minor as, as Carl said, get a decent one, pay the extra. They always go for the cheapest, the cheapest isn't always the best. Well, I actually, I found out the dear Chris who actually supplies them their stock. Mm. And I'm going to contact that company and see what, what deal I can get from them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I buy my batteries in at bulk, um, and then just get them for workmates and stuff like that. So I get them through the the wholesale side of the company that we're talking about. Um, you don't necessarily have to be a shop or anything like that. You just have to buy them, it's like 50 shells in one go or something. But, um, but as Danny's put there, cheap is cheap for a reason. Yeah. Um, things like the Molly cells, the Sony's, things like that, you're, you're far better getting a decent battery. Um, the Samsung 25 hours used to be the big ones, but until they sort of threw their toys out the pram about them being used in vape devices, didn't they? And now it's all printed on there, not suitable for vape and things like that. So you have to be a bit careful, really, these days. The one thing I've found in life, and it's something my grand used to tell us all the time, and it's true. In what <coughs> you say, if you want something to last, you're going to have to pay the, you're going to have to pay the price. Yeah. You can buy some cheap, cheap shit things that could last you well, but they're not the best. Yeah. Where if you pay a good amount of money, you know the product's going to last. You know what I mean? So <laughs> super. I've got a quote I bought. Actually, died fourteen years ago. So about eighteen. About 18 years ago, I bought this one coat and it still looks brand new. And it's 18 years old. Mm. Is it, it, it's, it's the same as everything in life. It's like you're talking about, isn't it? If you, if you it's, 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 money, yeah, it's like trainers. You can go and buy a cheap pair of trainers from know, Sports, Sports Direct or somewhere, or somewhere like that for like 15 quid. But the chances are, within two weeks, the heel's going to have collapsed on and the stitching's all going to start coming undone. Mm. Where you buy yourself a decent pair of trainers i don't know some nikes or something like that they're going to last you a bit longer um but yeah it's just batteries and battery safety i'd much rather pay when it when it comes to vehicle yeah i'd rather you spend the money to get a better bit of a kit because at the end of the day it's your health and safety you're bringing that device up to your face yeah. pressing the fire button you need to know to be safe there is companies in the uk in the in Europe, in the Far East, in the Middle East, you know what I mean? Everywhere in the world, there is clones of 90% of the devices that's out there. If you're going to buy something, don't buy from your car boot sale. You don't have it's a clone or not. Some clones are good, don't get us wrong, but some clones are so bad, it's unreal. Yeah. I was in a French vape shop um a couple of weeks back, someone came in and had a problem with their device. Oh, it's genuine. I just looked at it. That's not genuine. Here it is. I ended up. I got my hands on it and I went like that. And I was able to squish the full frame. And it's a fake. It's not. I've got a, I was right. Bring your box in. 
brought the box in and on the back you got you I'll show you on this authenticity scratch and sniff <laughs> just below the hologram you've got a scratch and review code if you scratch that off and you're going to on the geek vape site i'll tell you if it's genuine or not he scratched that panel off and it was empty there was nothing there he had a snade and it could have could have had very very harmful effects on that person because it was not real yeah. so if you're going to buy out make sure you buy from a reputable shop kerry your it's, comment there about batteries it's very 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 hard to tell a clone battery that's the problem because companies will buy batteries, whatever, a five amp discharge battery. They will buy the, the wraps from somewhere over in China and they will then rewrap those batteries as something that they're not. That's why we're saying the most important thing, I don't care if you're using a 10 pound cheap device from somewhere that takes a battery or a 200 pound device, spend your money on good quality batteries from a reputable place. Um, there's lots of different. I mean, I've I've had friends who've gone into vape shops and bought a dual battery device. I've looked at it, and then they've been sold five amp discharge batteries in in a dual battery device, and they're wondering why why it's not working properly. That's really really dangerous. I know there's lots of safety and mods and things like that these days, but batteries are the one thing. I mean, if you even just go on YouTube and just type in eighteen six fifty battery venting or something like that, and you see the burns that some people get from them and it's you just need to be super careful with it with, with your batteries this is one battery i've got it's a 21 700 as you can see it's got a lot of information stamped actually on the battery wrap just there also if you spin it round, it gives you a bit more information there as well on the actual battery what i tend to do is when i buy batteries like this i also ask the company if they could if i could buy a couple more battery wraps with the same information on for the battery so then when if anything happens with this i can take this off put another sleeve on with the same information because it's the same battery where some people have put a different color wrap on and think shit which one's this mm. you know what i mean and people get mixed up so yeah. it always this as the company that you're dealing with when you buy a battery like this it gives you all the relevant relevant information from the size the amps um voltage and ex expiry dates and whatnot on them nine times out of ten they'll charge you about 10 pence for an extra wrap and also make sure it's got the white disc at the top as well which is your positive because these are flat tops not nipple heads mm. you don't use nipple heads in any vape it's all flat tops but like I say, most most companies will sell you the wraps with the selected information on around 10, 20 pence for a wrap. And to, to rewrap one of these devices is a piece of piss. I don't know if I've got any battery wraps in here. I've got, I mean, I've got is, a lot of If you go wrap. back, Chris done a live on battery wrapping. Yeah, I can always do it again if people are, if people are, I mean, that was quite a while ago I did it and I think we've, we've got a lot of different viewers today i mean it's such a simple process to rewrap a battery but it's it's something to be used to really wary of is when you start getting nicks in your battery wraps and things it's just so much easier do with a hairdryer yeah it's, that's how i do it call with with a hairdryer it's the easiest and safest way okay, well, again this is an 18650 it's got all the information printed in dull black there but also it's going to it's also got it there as a quick painter and again, it's got the black protector cap at the top yeah. as well. It's very important that yeah. you look after your batteries. Because if anybody the really wants to get sorry, into the, like, the nerdy side of batteries and understanding what the best battery for a certain device is, um, if you go onto YouTube and type in the search battery mooch, um, he is like the god of battery knowledge um, to do with vaping products. Um, you can either take, type into Google and, and he'll advise you what the best battery is for certain mech devices, for regulated devices, for single 18650 dual, dual 21700, all depending on what sort of level of wattage your 
trying to draw out, out of that battery. Um, it is quite in-depth stuff. So if you just want a bit of basic knowledge, then the companies that we, we were talking about that Justin sort of mentioned there by putting a couple of stars in as well, they'll, they'll give you enough information on there. But if you want to get into the depth of it, he does talk a lot about clone batteries on there in some ways that you can tell. Um, it's all to do with the number of prongs on the top of the um, positive section on the battery and things. Um, but even then, it's not that easy to tell. Um, you literally have to properly test them in a battery testing device with uh, readers and everything like that to actually be able to tell if it's a clone battery or not. I've just responded to your message, uh, Ronnie. You've actually messaged the team page instead of me personally direct so if you message me direct i will be able to help you um i did mention in the chat to message me direct nihon done but if you message me direct i can walk you through and help you all the way mate how often should you refresh and buy new batteries does it depend on how much of it kerry it massively does and it depends on how much your um, I don't want to use the word abusing, but using the battery to its limits. I've got some batteries which I use in my mouth to lung devices that I've had for over a year. Um, I wouldn't say that you necessarily need to change them at a specific time, but what you'll start noticing is that after you've fully charged them, you won't be getting as long out of them as what you used to get, and that's when you need to start thinking about um, sort of changing your batteries. But it does, it depends on how you look after your batteries. If you use a good external charger, that will help with the lifespan of your battery as well. Um, but there's no, no, nobody should ever turn one to turn on to you and say, "Oh, you've had that battery six months, or you've had that battery three months." You need to get new ones. It all depends on how much you use the battery and how much sort of power you're drawing out of them on on a regular basis. Um, so there's no sort of set time. Um, a battery will take however many cycles it will take. Um, but you'll start noticing the battery just doesn't last as long. Um, change charge retention. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's all to do with the way the chemicals uh, work inside the battery. Um, yeah. So just just sort of keep an eye when when your battery isn't lasting as long as what it used to. That's the time to get new ones, in my opinion. Scott's busy typing away up there. I've just had to check my name then just to make sure he hasn't changed it to anything inappropriate because it's after nine o'clock now. No, I've, I'm just messaging that Ronnie. All oh, right. You know what I mean? Uh, I need to get some 21 7 engines on Friday, 18650 life. Uh, battery life is killing me. Yeah. Um, if you have a look on that site we were talking about, Kim, I'm sure you know the one that we're talking about, but if not, drop one of us a, one of us a message. And you sign up to their like newsletter thing, don't you? And then every Friday they send you that discount code. Um, if you're using a multi but multi but to get the best get new ones, um, and marry them if I'm correct. Yeah, there's cars put there. Um, I always keep all of my batteries in pairs. I'm not going to show you the other side because that talks about the company there that we're all talking about. Not that it really matters too much. Um, I always keep mine in pairs inside the thing. Um, I've got some. I can that one there, which I use for my single battery devices. That's where they've got different wraps on them. Um, yeah, so I always keep my batteries together. So my dual batteries always stay together, and I've got so much I just use the single ones as well, just like those ones in there. These two always stay together. Just the like only that. batteries I tend to use is 18650s and 21700s. You can't you can get 2700s. You can get yeah. your 13. 360 is it? These little bad boys as well, whatever these M11s are. Um, 18350s, these are which I used in some of my little devices. I've got them for my pipe thing, wherever it is. There's, there's, there's loads of different batteries out there. When it, If anybody needs the, a little bit of advice on what, what would be the best battery to use for what device. Do not hesitate to contact any one of me, Sean, or Chris. Yeah. We will help you in any way, shape, or form we can, and we will go above and beyond to help you, you know what I mean? That's what we're here for. We want you to be safe. 
We want you to get the best product to help you stay away from the toxic chemicals of cigarettes. You know what I mean? So the knowledge that the three of us have got is is amazing you know what i mean the stuff we don't know probably isn't worth knowing you know what i mean we've probably forgotten more than what some people actually know in the vaping game you know what i mean there's people say oh you need this isn't well no had there stop you've been vaping two minutes why do you need a full mech why do you need an all day you've been vaping two months reality check it's not about blowing big clouds it's not about flavor chasing it's you know the stinkies there's lots of products on the market that will benefit you without going to the mech side or the build side you know what i mean you know what i mean you've got it's so should be down you know you've got a highly trained electrician there who who works on with Ohm's law in his sleep. You've got Chris as well, the teacher, very switched on, cooled up at times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he, he loves his mouth the long side, he loves his direct along, he also likes his, his max at times and also his pipe. You know what I mean? Well, you've got me. I'm more of you. I'm more RDA, an RTA forward, like you know. Um, I do use the occasional subwoman pods and whatnot. The knowledge, like I say, as a whole between us three, will help you a long, long way. That's why we created the Bearded Brothers because even though you've got Sean live down in the Midlands and you've got Chris down south of me up in north in Geordie Land. We all brothers in a way, you know what I mean? Put the Beards one side, but us as a trio, as a team, the knowledge is paramount and it will help us go above and beyond. And it will help us all we will help us all the way in any way, shape or form we can. Kim, in response to your question there about um, for the Ursa kit specifically, um, two batteries straight away jump to mind, either the Molly Cell 21700s or the Samsung 30Ts. Samsung 30Ts, with it being a regulated device, would be my push because they've got a slightly higher um, milliamp hour from memory compared to the uh, Molly Cells. But let me check if I can find some Molly Cells somewhere. I don't know if I've got many Molly Cell 21700s. Is the Ursa uh, 1860, 18650? 21 or 2700, yeah. Kim, if you if you want, Chris has just said there, there was two seconds, I'll see what I can do. Yeah, I don't know if I've, I've got some Molly cells somewhere, but I can't remember what the milliamp power in them, in them is. Um, yeah, I think she yeah. wants 21700, Chris, because 18650s only last them five hours. Yeah, yeah, definitely go for the 21700s. And with it being a regulated, I would say probably the Samsung oh, thing. Yeah. Stop having a quick look there and see what the milliamp hour battery in the um in the Molly cells is. Yeah, we'll got slightly uh, lower. Uh, another thing you said about marrying the batteries, it's only for yeah. dual battery mods. Obviously, yeah. if you don't use dual battery mods, it doesn't make any difference. But no. if you've got a dual if you use a dual battery mod, keep them batteries together. Yeah. So if you take one and then use it in another, when you put them back into a dual battery mod, the drain on one will be quicker than the other. Yeah. Right. So with the Molly Cell P42 ears, which is a 21700, they are a 30 amp discharge, max discharge with a capacity of 4200 mAh. Milli yeah. In so that's either of them, yeah, either of them will be fine. Molly style, yeah, twenty one seven hundred. Yeah, then you've got yeah, the yeah. You've got your eighteen six fifty, which is a twenty five max discharge with a twenty six hundred mEh. 
Kim, what are you actually running at the moment? He's got 18650s in it at the minute with the battery adapter and the last one of five hours. Yeah, definitely either, either the either the Molly Cell Kim. or the Samsung 30T. You can't go wrong with either when they're regulated. Molly Cell's it in my mind a fantastic form mix. But the 30Ts have got a it says a maximum continuous discharge of 35 amp on there. Um, Molly cells I love for my mech stuff. I've got a lot of faith in them. Um, so either would be perfect. I think the, I think the Samsung 30Ts are a bit cheaper than the Molly cells. Yeah, I use a 30T in my uh, Velocity. Yeah, great batteries. Do you use an external battery charger? Okay, yeah. <laughs> if you're using dual battery, you should be. Otherwise, that's what's causing some of the issues with your batteries as well. Wait till she responds. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. She said. yeah. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on both of you, but not your toys. What <laughs> <laughs> the plug of the walls for, isn't it? <sighs> Kim, if you want, I'm more than happy to send you. Two Molly Cell P42 ears, brand new, unused, still in the packaging. If you need an external charger, I've got a spare one there, which is a good cracking one. I'm happy to send you that as well. Jump at me messages, send us a message. We'll have a bit crack, and like I say, I want two spanking brand new, unused Molly Cells there for you. And I've got an external charger I can send you as well, and I'm not going to take anything for it. It'll be a nice little gift from me to you just to help you with your Ursa. Great yeah. them, Molly nice. sells great batteries, as Chris said, perfect yeah. for mechs. So you know, the Samsung 30Ts do the job, but obviously the Molly yeah. sells are. I mean, Molly Cell is, is one of the only batteries, isn't it, which have been developed with vaping in mind. The rest of them are all sort of adapted for what would have originally been used as torch batteries and things. I know that torch batteries have got the nipple top on them and things like that, but um, Molly cells are for the are designed for vaping devices. There's a couple of them out there like VAP cell and things like that, but they're not the same quality. Oh, she's got the upgraded version of your charger. She's got the Nikkor i4. I've got that there. I can send you with, with the batteries. If you don't want the charger, I'm more than happy to send you just the batteries by themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah, the i4 is a great charger, Kim. That's that's what I use. I've had it for about a year and a half now. It's never missed a beat. Um, one thing now. I know a lot of us do it, and we shouldn't do it. Never leave your batteries on charge and just go to bed or anything like that. I'm the world's worst for doing it, leaving batteries in my charge and just go to bed. But be careful with them because they can still go wrong. Um, that changed. Here's my 21700. Very generous offer from Scott. Scott's like that. He's a lovely, lovely bloke. Um, be with 8650. It's too bad with them. Don't be silly. He's got a map to buy them. Just what device are you talking about? Them? Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. I'll do. But I'd go, whatever your device takes, if it takes all three batteries, why would you put an 18650 in them? In, unless you're worried about the weight, I would always go for the biggest batteries. That yeah, you the higher put. battery. Yeah, 100%. Um, well, it well, does come with a nice 18650 sleeve, but. Yeah, that still gets chucked to the side in twenty one seven. Where have they gone? Same as these little ones came with the with the two sleeves as well, so you can put different batteries in them as well. I I always think you should put the biggest battery that you can in the device, because um, it lasts longer. Then doesn't it? You're not worrying about carrying spare batteries around in in a little case in the um, pocket. Um, never, never have them loose. I must admit, as you know, I drive a, a shitload with with my work. It's I bought a little wash bag from Primark of all places for four quid. The front compartment, I have three devices: a Mac, a Pod, in my Odin normally inside. I'll have a little toolkit, some cotton, my juice, in the little pocket, a bottle opener, 
spare coils, sub ohm coils, and rebuildable coils. And I have a spare pack of batteries just in case. One being 21700 and 18650, mm -hmm. just to be on the safe side, like you know, because I'm always out and about. And you know, like Chris says, with with a single single coil, um, single battery device, you can actually use it with a USB charger. Me personally, I wouldn't, but that's just me being me. Um, but make sure if you are going to carry batteries, then the proper protective cases. Not bouncing around because it's just going to do. Uh, it's just going to do the um. Oh, who's it? That out there, brothers. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, well, if if you buy from the reptile company, like Chris yeah. is making the show, yeah. they come in a battery case anyway. But if you want something a bit more, like Scott was, or Chris was showing earlier, they're pittance. They're a pound. If if that. Yeah, I mean, I. I'm still a bit cautious about these because they, they they aren't the hardest things to open. And after after they get a bit old, I mean, this one's going a bit like that now. That could still. I mean, I I always carry a spare pair of batteries in, in my work bag, but I always have them in in the zip one, showing showing the logo of the company we're talking about there. But these are they they're they're like a pound or they were fifty p or something silly like yeah, that. Sometimes you chuck them in for free, I think. Yeah, and there's there's I can just the and I'm, I'm safe. The plastic side that you've shown just before, not yeah. that squishy one. Yeah, I know the company we're talking about sell them for about 36 pence each. Yeah. Buy them ones though. Mm. Put them on like 199 each. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You pay you pay for what you get at the end of the day. Yeah. It's just safety, isn't it? Um I cringe when I see people just putting vape batteries in in, in the pocket. You're just asking for trouble. All it takes is a bit of change or your keys or something to make contact with the positive and negative at the same time. Before you know it, you've got a thermal runaway in your pocket and you've got third degree burns. Yeah, um, not a nice thing to happen. That's what that's what used to give vape a bad, really bad name a few years ago. It, it was all about the issues with the batteries, wasn't it? Um, I think technology has moved on a lot, and I think people are a lot more aware of how dangerous lithium batteries can be. Um, some of the some of the videos on YouTube are just insane, where people have them vent in their pocket and things, and you see like this firework going off inside the pocket. It's, um, where can you get the battery holders from in the cases? Trevor, ping me a message. It's the same place that we were talking about for um, the batteries that you get a discount code on a Friday, and that comes off the cases as well. Yeah, any batteries can vent. That's just obviously it just. Yeah. You just gotta look after them, make sure there's no yeah. tears in the wraps, make sure you don't push them to their limits constantly. Yeah. A lot of companies will send your batteries out in the plastic container yeah. Chris showed you, the yeah. trans translucent one, or they'll send them in yeah. one of these round ones. Basically, you pull the top cap off and it pops your battery as you can see. It's got all your in relevant information on the side. Quarter turn again there as well. Protect a cap the lot. You know what I mean? And they come in these very safe, durable plastic tubes. Mm. Yeah, it's just it's just it's a safety thing, isn't it? We we've, we've been going on and on about it as well. I would hate for anybody that any of us knew to have. A battery vent in their pocket just because they just chucked it in there. I mean, I'm super cautious about around my batteries. Negligence at the end of the day, Chris. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's what it, it comes is. down to. But it gives, it gives. Unfortunately, because the first thing someone says, "Oh, it must be something wrong with the battery to the shop I bought it from." Well, it's not. It's actually because you've just put it in your pocket. Um, that's the one thing that should be drummed into people, and that's why things like this with an internal battery. For somebody who's just getting into the vaping side of things, are absolutely amazing because it's just simple. You just put your juice in when when your battery's getting low. You plug your charger into it, and off you go. You're not messing around with the external ones. Um, used to get my dinner money in those plastic tubes at school. <laughs> um, You're not that old, Tim, man. Bloody hell! No. Nah. Yeah, I'm probably the oldest one on the team. I think, apart from Pete. <laughs> 
Yeah? Your arm doesn't peach? Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's after nine o'clock. I can say fuck off. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Uh, Christ, I can remember half penny sweets and everything like that, or three for half p. Fucking hell, I'm almost 30. Bloody hell, Kim. Now you're making me feel old. Yeah. Wow. Anything else apart from batteries people want us to quickly go over? Um, we're not going to go over massively mechs or anything like that because that's better done either on a review when Scott's looking at a device or one on one. Um, but like Scott was mentioning earlier about everybody wanting to get mechs to blow these big clouds and all that sort of stuff, you don't need to these days with, with the quality of sub ohm tanks, you can get just as much a cloud um, from a sub ohm tank than, than from a mech. Um, I've got quite a few mechs floating around down sort of down there. I'm not a massive user of them anymore. Um, I absolutely love the Twistle V2, which Scott sent me. Um, I've got silly things like the Hog V4, which is 421 700 battery straight through. Um, but yeah, it's just why do sweet juices knock a cause? It's because when the um, the actual e liquid heats up, when you actually burn the coil. The sugar eventually starts to, or the sweetener eventually starts to crystallize around the coil, and that sort of increases the the sort of burnt flavor. Um, whether it's to do with it starts blocking the um, the sort of juice um, sort of flowing uh, sort of around the coils. And I don't know the exact science behind it, but I just do know the sweeteners do it. Um, and you can normally tell a really sweet juice because when you come to change your cotton and RD8, it's normally gone quite black on the coil as well. Um, Night, Tara. Hi Tara. Hey, Tara. Yeah, if anyone wanted anything done, just obviously ask because Chris is more than happy to do a battery wrap tutorial yeah. on his lives. You know, if he's doing a juice review of only a few juices, I'm sure he'd tag yeah. on to the end of his juice review. Same with Scott with a build or anything like that. Or if you know anyone want any advice on battery safety and I don't know, tanks, anything like that, just ask because they're more than happy to do it. Mm. Obviously, I can't do it because we do the bonanza so it's a bit different but obviously the guys doing the reviews more than happy to offer any advice the thing is if you if you just want the bearded brothers kind of range we could do a once a month where we don't do a juice review we don't do a hardware review we can have a general open mic night We'll put a post up at the beginning of the week. You can hire your questions on that post. Come the Wednesday night, the brothers are together. I may be able to answer some of the questions where Chris and Sean can't. Vice versa, Chris could answer some, me and Sean can't. And there's questions Sean can answer that me and Chris can't. You've got three amazing brains in one live. To give you the help you need. If you would like that to happen, we will do it. Mm. It sounds like we have laughed and joke about doing a build off. The three we're going to build the same on the same tank to see who builds. A, it's just a bit funny games between the three. We we can do it because we've been building for such a long time. You know what I mean? We know our mistakes. We know how to do get around mistakes and whatnot. So it's going to be done for fun and a bit of giggles. Between I'll, the three, I'll have a shit on the hot spots. What am I? I tell you, I'll be playing. Let me do that 300 watt challenge last night. Jesus, <laughs> just chuck him in, give him a quick stroke, bang some cotton in, be able to bait. There you go. I've done it. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. You know, so we actually do a build off between the three. Where you see three cameras at the top and three at the bottom. You have me, Chris, and Sean at the top, and we we'll have uh, other cameras underneath. So we're all going to be doing a build so you can't see Chris cheating by having pre-cooked coils and whatnot. You know what I mean? Because we know what Chris is doing. You put your pillow because it takes Scott off and I want to redo an RDA. So you, you might have a little snooze halfway through. Oh, you see Sean switching the tanks. He has one I made earlier. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, he's on to me. Oh, dear. You know what I mean? Oh, he's got well, Kelly on the He's got Kelly on the table. He's for him. The tank then is not in. Because yeah. doing anything on camera is so much more difficult, isn't it? Oh, it yeah. is a lot more difficult. Doing, 
and, and, and everything. I mean, I, I, I can change coils and re-wicker one of the SE kits in about two minutes, if, if that, you know what I mean? But doing it on cameras is, is a lot harder because you've got the pressure of looking and laughing at everybody else putting the coils in and stuff like that. And even though you've got to try to keep it in front of the camera as well. Exactly. Um, you understand. Nah, and also we'll probably start bitching itches so we we'll lose concentration yeah. and whatnot. <laughs> I'm going to imagine Donovan Jane just going and slap, just going and slap Jordan, uh, Scott around the head. I do, the I tell you, well. do you know about Donovan and Sean, do you? Oh, I agree. Have you changed that to Scott? <laughs> Before you should slip there, you see. <laughs> Scott's from <going> early. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. See, like, Donna did go away for a couple of days the other two weeks ago, like. She never yeah. said where she went. <sighs> I was in Essex then. Oh, she may have been as well. She may have been as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's getting red. Excuse me, Mr. Plumber, can you help me fix my washing machine? <laughs> Scott, it work. <laughs> You'd be That's wondering. Like Paul, oh, job, it? It's all them homework. <laughs> but no. Either, either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I can see Kelly come through that door soon. Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, well. but no. Oh, um, in the next, in the coming weeks, I will be doing a live unboxing on the Velocity. I will be doing a live unboxing and build on the Orbiter RTA. So you'll get to see a different build on the RTA Orbiter, uh, which is different than, like, say, your dead right. It, there's that many different tanks out there at the minute that the, there is easy ways of doing builds and there's hard ways of doing builds. Different tanks have a different level of complicated aspects of doing builds on, which are easy to overcome if you know what you're doing and how to do it. So if you are interested in that size, do watch and we will help you. But don't think you need to start building to advance your vapor needs if you've been vaping two minutes. Even if you've been vaping a long time, don't jump into the frying pan full of fire because it's something you want to do. You know what I mean? You need to understand a few things before you get yourself into building. Okay, she's done can half him. She would have her puppy. There's, <laughs> there's different ways of doing builds as well because I, I obviously watch a lot of your sort of reviews, Scott, and everything. You're really careful about getting your coil all placed right and everything, then putting the clamps down. I do mine different. I, I literally chuck the coil in there, clamp one side down, and then reposition it and fiddle around with it once I've clamped it all down. Whereas you like to get yours right first and then get it all sort of screwed in. I chuck mine in and then sort it out afterwards. And if I need to pull a leg over, I'll slightly loosen one of the screws, pull the leg over a bit and stuff before I snip it. And um, there's just different ways of doing things. Um, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. The, the, yeah. Versatility of the three as a whole, we've all got with unique ways. It's like, um, showing messages about I think it might have been Tora, um, with that dead rabbit. Oh, no, it wasn't, it was an SA kit. She's done a build. I says, Yeah, yeah. take your coins from where and pull them center together, but make sure there's still a gap. It doesn't have to be a massive gap, just a, a good enough gap so you could guess basically. That in between, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's I mean, what I have in between mine. So she done that, yeah. she put them in, she, she, she messaged back saying, bleep, 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 bleep. Amazing yeah. because she moved them in closer, and she was getting a better aroma, flavor, and hit because the coils came yeah. in, like you know, but, th but then on a, on, a, on a different art on a different RDA. You might need to have the coils further apart as well. It's all about playing with them and working out what's best for you. I mean, I like a, I like a warm vape. I don't like a hot vape, and I don't like a cool vape. So it's all about coil positioning for flavour, and then you need to be looking at what sort of own coil you're putting in. I mean, I, I predominantly use about 0.1 coils on about sort of 55, 60 watts, so it's just warm. But then it's about positioning them those coils for that specific. RDA or RTA as well. It it, it it works for both of them, really. It's just finding that 
that sweet spot for you that may be completely different for Scott and for Sean of how they like theirs. But I like mine. Mine pulled out on this tank, so I'm getting a bit of a cooler vape come through or, or whatever. It's just it's just different. And then sorting out the dreaded hot spots. That's the one. And it all depends on the coils as well. I've I I get coils made by hand for me and stuff. And some of them are absolutely great. You can put them in there and there's there's not a single hot spot virtually straight away. Other ones you're there for like two or three yeah, minutes. Absolutely get fucking things out of there, and it's an absolute nightmare. I've, I've had coils with virtually no hot spots. I've had coils you've over primed them to get the hot spots yeah. out, but then you yeah. burn the coil out and say they're much yeah. in the bin. But one, I, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. Do not go for the coil wheels. I think they're the biggest load of pants. Yeah. When you're getting into building, though, when you're first starting, I don't know if I've got any of this. I did the practice on, don't get us wrong, but not the yeah, paper. Something like that, right? When you're starting, I would say actually get one of them because the first two or three times that you're putting a coil in there, you're going to cock it up. Yeah. You're going to cut one of the legs too short or something. Now, if you've just gone out and paid £7 for a set of coils that someone's made, hard made, you're going to be a bit pissed off. Whereas one of those coil wheels, not necessarily this one, I've got other ones floating around somewhere, probably in my build thing there. Yeah, you, can, out, you? Yeah, you can some of them are even cheaper than that. Um <coughs> and you have to find out what kind of coil you like as well, because there's lots of different ones. Some of them give better flavour, some of them are better at higher watch, some of them better lower watch and things. It's all about finding the right ones that you like. And then once you've got a bit more sort of practice with your building and stuff, then start looking to get somebody to make you some really nice handmade coils. There's loads and loads of people out there who do it. All you've got to do is have a look on some of the Facebook groups. They'll do them. Um, your local vape shop may sell some of the handmade ones. Um, but, yeah, um, as, as a long time, the Chinese coils that you get and the ones that you get in a lot of your sort of kits when you first buy them, they're okay, but they're not brilliant. They're enough to get you started and do a bit of practicing on them. Have we got any more questions? Because time is getting on and when numbers are dropping. You do build and do it wrong. Can you ruin a mod? Um, Kerry, in theory, right, a mod like this, if I did something wrong with the build on here, it should come up on the front saying um, atomizer short or something along those lines. You're not going to ruin the mod. But if there's something gone wrong with the safety mechanism inside the mod, which could happen, it's just a board at the end of the day, you could end up damaging yourself and damaging the mod. The chances of it happening on a regulated mod are relatively small. If you did a build wrong on a mech and you hit that fire button, that's when you could be in a lot of trouble because there's no protection there at all. Um, and that's why you still need to know battery safety yeah. and you need to know Ohm's law and stuff like yeah. that. Because as Chris said, a regulated mod can still fail. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and when we say battery safety, it's not knowing what an 18650 is, what a 2700 yeah. or 21700 is. Yeah. That's not battery safety. That's knowing different sizes. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's plenty of calculators out there and plenty of um, diagrams. Yeah, I mean, if you, if, you, if you just type type in a Google and and all you have to do is put in what your um, your voltage output is. Now, all batteries say 4.2, but they're, they're not really that because you've got things like voltage drop, which I'm not going to go into because that's a bit geeky. Um, but it, it will actually tell you how many amps you're going to be drawing off that battery. So, so you're putting 4.2 volts in. You've got a 0 0.1 ohm coil. At 65 watts, you're going to be pulling X amount of amps or whatever. Now, obviously, that's fine on a regular, but when you're moving over to MEX, you're just basically blasting that 4.2 volts straight through a coil with no protection in there at all. Now, if you've built too low or you've got a short or something, you're drawing too much power in one bit go from that battery, and that, in theory, when the battery can vent, the chance of it suddenly blowing up in your hand or anything like that, that is quite an extreme thing. That's called thermal runaway. Um, normally a battery will vent and it just hisses a bit and things, but you can in theory blow up that mod in your hand, and that's why mechs have if I've got one anywhere handy that's probably not a very good example um, 
yeah. on this one here. Yes, this Kerry. Like sort of eventing and... Sorry? Mm. Kerry asks, does make something I have nothing on it to tell you what are genomes? So, yeah. Exactly, yeah. It's just basically a tube. Um, I mean, you've got things that look like... Mm. I'm sure Scott's got his... Um... Yeah, I mean, that there is a Kennedy mech there. But that's what everyone sort of sees as mech, as little tube things as well. But then you also get things like these, these un unregulated boxes. Um, looks like a box mod, but all it's got is a power button on the side. And then inside it is just your battery, and that's it in a switch. You basically press the power button on the side there, and the whole lot goes through. I mean, yeah. and that's a series mech as well, so you need to be really careful with them, because that's pushing even they more. direct contact with the battery. Yeah. <coughs> they are relatively safe providing that you're careful with them and you know what you're doing and you build safely um every single build that i do for a mech i will always test out on a regulated device first i never put it straight on a mech i know some people do who are very confident in the building but i would always have that little bit of reassurance yeah that i have checked it and that's why i was on a regulators and yeah. for a mech yeah But hey, no more questions coming through, I don't think. Nope. Cheeky plug, Bonanza tomorrow. Tickets available if you still want them. <laughs> 500 tickets, only £2 each. 25 amazing boxes. Yeah. Oh, stick to pods. Mex is too dangerous for me. Carry honestly, Mex, uh, something for hobbyist vapors who want to play with things and stuff. There's. There's no need to go for a mech, in my no. opinion. I think regulated devices, sub arm tanks, and everything like that. And you can just put your same RDA, same RTA on top of a regulated device, bump the power up, and you're still going to get exactly the same clouds as what you would have for mech. Mechs are great. We're all mech vapors, all three of yeah. us. But we're sitting here reviewing a little pod tonight and saying how great it is. Yeah. So, yeah. To only be honest, I, I will use this more than I will use any of my mechs. For the simple reason is I can just turn it off, chuck it in my pocket. With a yeah. mech, I never carry a mech in my pocket with a battery in, so I've then got to carry a battery case around with me. If I want to use it, I've then got to unscrew the base off the mech, put the battery in, mess around with it, hold it away from my face when I do the first press just in case something's gone wrong. <laughs> so um, that sticks in your head for days. The, the thing is, is with, with me, the only time you'll see me using my Max is on I my mean, Monday night live. Sometimes a Wednesday night live. It's sometimes I may use it every weekend. You know, if I'm sitting doing some work in the like paperwork in the house, I might use one. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, I'm either using me Boost. I'm using me Azor one twenty, or I'm using me Up End. You know what I mean? I, I use multiple different devices, but me Mex I don't use all the time. It's very rare I use them. You know what I mean? I've got one Mech that was gifted to me nearly a year ago as a birthday present, which has actually got the Bianca Georgie Butter on and Braun Strowman. It's also got the Coil Bender logo on the fire button. And I only use that on very, very special occasions because it was a gift from a very, very close friend. And it's the only time I'll use that one. I mean, you can get silly mechs as well. I mean, look at that bloody thing. Four eighteen six fifties stacked mech. Well, I've got I've got my hammer right. and yeah. that I've used. Yeah, I've got my hog as well. I, I put it again somewhere last night because I took it out last night because someone was talking about it. And I've put it somewhere safe again. I mean, that's that's four twenty one seven hundreds in parallel series going straight through, using series coils and all that sort of stuff. It it starts getting a bit complicated, and it's a bit of a pain in the arse to be honest with you. That's why I like just my mouth to lung and my sort of rebuildables. I'm not a massive stock coil user just because I'm too tight to keep going out and buying coils all the time. Um, can you you can get a rebuildable deck for these as well, can't you? A rebuildable pod. If I remember rightly, you can get the RBA deck because I've actually got the yeah. original boost with an RBA deck. Yeah, but it's so tiny and fiddly, it's good for me for fingers. Yeah. I think I've got one somewhere as well. Yeah, my um, Ursa kit 
Um, I've got the rebuildable coil for that somewhere hiding in here. I've not even tried to build on it because it's literally tiny. Um, you, you'd be using a tiny little coil like one of those. You probably can't even see very well on the camera. There's like 10 coils in there. Um, that's the sort of size of coil that you're using, and they're so fiddly. Um, I think it even came free with my Ursa kit whenever I bought it. Um, but it's hiding away in here somewhere amongst all my crap. <coughs> I don't know where I've put it. It's in here somewhere amongst all the other rubbish that I've got in this drawer. Along with half a bottle of um, smash it, lemon chips because I was filling up my pot and I, and I, and I, popped, the, I popped the cap off and it pissed all over my legs and all of my drawers while I'm not cleaned it out properly yet. In other words, you wet yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah pants, pants, pants. In. It's okay, I haven't changed your name, Chris. You don't have to keep looking. <laughs> I was just checking again. <laughs> you can see you were changed. Has he changed my name? Has he... Anytime yeah. Scott go quiet, you need to check something. No, I'm just busy talking with Ronnie, helping him with this uh, problem with his boost. Um, that lots of knowledge for me to gain. This, yeah, there's, no. always, there's always more and more stuff to learn. I mean, we, we all know how to do building and stuff, but as soon as a new tank comes out, you have to build it in a slightly different way. The <laughs> deck may be orientated slightly different. It was a bit like the... Is it the Hell Beast, Scott, where depending on which way your coils are wrapped, you have to put it in? Yeah, with, with the Hell Beast, yeah. if your coils are wrapped clockwise, you've got to cut them into 5 mil. Yeah, that's right. Post length. Where if it's yeah. wrapped anti-clockwise, you've got to cut them at 7 mil. Yeah. The reason why is because with the Hell Beast, instead of being straight on legs, the offset, yeah. so it gives you the, the room for the legs to move to yeah. sit at the end where it's with a dead rabbit you can put the legs straight through and you can yeah. snip underneath where with the hell beast it actually gives you the cutting tool for that mm -hmm. and came to answer that question the reason you would have got a flame when you were firing it is there could have been some residue of juice there as well as little fragments of cotton would you just caught light when you pulsed it that's yeah. all it's fine just quickly blow it out job yeah. done and you know you're fine it happens to me all the time as well because obviously I clean my RDAs out after each review I've done and then put them up sort of cleaner. But I then go through and sort of dry burn all of the coils again just to make sure there's no hot spots come up in them or anything before I re-wick them. And quite often I'll get a little bit of a flame, you just blow it out. Um that's not the end of the world. Start a low watch phase, Kim, and then build up the watts. Yeah, that's right. Especially with brand new coils, you don't want to um and whatever you do, I see it all the time on people doing reviews. Don't pulse your coils, get them hot, and then put them in water. I don't know no. why people do that. It, it, can, yeah. it can cause your coil to fracture. It can ruin them. Uh, just blow on it, and that cools it down. Or leave it, leave it on the side for five minutes to cool down before you put You're your. You're shocking the metal. Yeah, it's, it's pointless. If like, yeah. when they build like knives and stuff like that, they heat the metal to shape it, and then they put it in water to set it. Yeah, you don't want to set your coil. You best not put it. Oh, for nature, you drop it in oil to quench, to quench it. But a big, massive tip for all you suburbans out there: if you've got a boost, if you've got a whirlpool, if you've got a dry, a drive, a smock, anything like that, best thing to do is before you put your coil in, get your juice and on all the bits of cotton around the side, yeah. or a few drops of juice around it on the on the bits of cotton. Yeah. Hold it up, do it inside as well. You're actually pre priming the coil because yeah. normally they'll say put the coil in, fill your tank up, leave it for 10 15 minutes to saturate. Yeah. Pre box to that, put a few drops around the sides, go around it about three times, drop, 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 turn. You know what I mean? Do that three times and do the same on the inside. Stick the coil in, hide your juice in the tank, leave it for two, three minutes max. And you're ready, ready to go yeah. because you've already pre, pre sorted the coils. Like you see, when me and Chris do with juice reviews, even Sean will saturate the coils with the juice, put it on side, smell test, taste test, vape. Yeah. And the cottons are saturated because we pre soaked the cotton beforehand. And that's a key tip to anybody using stock coils as well. 
Yeah, I mean, there's other tricks you can do, like you can close the air holes, can't you, on it, and without pressing the fire button, start sort of drawing it through just to try and help the juice flow. Yeah. Sometimes you might get a, a bit of a mouthful of juice the first time that you vape on it or whatever, but it's better than burning your coil out. I mean, I, I pre-prime, like what Scott said there, putting the juice down the top, all the size, just to help try and help the juice flow. I then still leave mine that 10, 15 minutes afterwards, and I find out that I get sort of a bit of a longer life out of the coil that way as well. Um, I was watching a video got a while ago, and some bloke was saying that the best way that he gets the longevity out of the coil as well was he actually takes a draw on it, releases the power button, but then keeps drawing on, on the actual on the actual mouthpiece at the same time, which then helps the, the, the coil cool down quicker or something. I've never really tried it, and I don't really understand the, how that would work, but he swore that that helped help with the lifespan of his coil as well because he was allowing, he was drawing a lot more of the vapor off. So probably the sweetener or something wasn't settling around the coil as much. I don't know. But it's, um, he swore by it. I can't bother with that. I just don't use rebuild. I just use rebuild with stuff. I've seen people who do a fresh build on an odd year or an odd to year. Wait, yes, put juice on, hit the fire button, light the lighter, set the light, and blow it up. Because it's bollocks. You never need to do any of that bullshit. No, no. Just buy, buy some decent cotton. It's be decent cotton. I use Muji cotton. I've got cotton laces. I've got cotton bacon. Bloody <coughs> I've got all sorts. They're all pretty pretty much alike, to be honest with you. Some of them have got a bit of a longer break in time. Sometimes you get a bit of a cotton taste for the first couple of pulls or whatever. But, I mean, I, I swear by this stuff, and I always will do. A bag of Muji cotton, Amazon, seven seven quid or something like that. Something that's your date, there's, there's, there's probably two years' worth of cotton in there for me, and that's doing the reviews as well. Tell the truth, you know, you Yeah, and then for the same price, you can buy yourself, I don't know, a couple of bags of laces. Or whatever. Yeah. Um, laces are great for people. You've got issues with sort of dexterity of the fingers and stuff. I I've been using laces again recently just because I'm because I've been a bit lazy. Um, yeah. Would you recommend rinsing stock cords and leaving them dry, Kerry? No, I wouldn't because of the water. There is some people who do clean them out with um, a spirit like vodka or something. Again, a pack. Of, what's a pack of cords? Eight quid. For it depends. Again, but the range. Range from about two two quid up to about four quid for us each for yeah. a single stock coil. Yeah. But I'm, if if you if you train it right and you use it right and don't abuse it, you will get good time out of out of yeah. a stock coil. Best stock coil I've used on one of my sub home tanks, I've got over nine thousand pulls on it. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's on one stock coil. And actually the juice I used in that is Sean's favourite, the peach tart. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, like I, just, I, I just wouldn't bother with it for, for for the cost of let's say you're paying ten pound for a pack of five coils or twelve quid or whatever in, in your local vape shop. That's going to last you what, at least a month, if not longer. So, so to ten hours, I, 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 I'm too lazy to do stuff like clean my coils out with vodka. Vodka's for drinking, not for cleaning coils out. Not that I'm a big vodka fan. I think you wouldn't put gin near it. Kerry, in all honesty, whoever told you that needs a high five to the face with a baseball bat because it's yeah. a load of nonsense. Not water, anyway. I do know, I do know people who clean theirs out with vodka and stuff. I'd be a bit concerned about heating their coil up that's had vodka in it. Uh, it should be okay, but for for what they cost, Kerry, it's it, it's not worth the drama. Um, spirits for drinking, not for cleaning coils out with. Just buy yourself a new pack. Um, Charlie, has anybody else got any more questions? Yeah, Kim said there she gets two weeks out of her coil. What's that? Three quid? Russian's best. No, see, I, I like a coil that's been <laughs> used for about two or three weeks. Yeah, sorry, two or three days. High five to the face the whole butt, buddy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not a fan of a fresh coil. I like a coil that's been used for a few days. The cotton's broken in. You're getting a bit of flavour. I mean, I'm not going to show you. Well, I, I can show you the state of the inside. It's gonna, it's gonna be awful. Of my mouth alone, rebuildable. Karina, would you have a 
it's mm. it's black as the ace of spades but i like the flavor that comes off it it's a rebuildable so i can take the cotton out at any time and dry burn the coil but i sort of like the flavor on that one when it's been used for about a week and eddie Scott was being polite because he's on the live so yeah. You'd see a different side, honestly. Yeah. Um, but again, Karina, you saying that comment there means more to us three than any anything you uh, any gift could do, like you know, because knowing that we our knowledge has helped one person means more to us than actually receiving any like anything like you know just knowing that we're ha that people are learning from our knowledge we're we're more than happy to help anybody and everybody in the best way we can feel free to drop a, a mess private message if you want um if you can't contact we privately on messenger come to the group and put a post in the group or can scott chris or sean drop us a message bang straight away once available to do so we'll drop your message straight away and we'll help you in any way shape or form i've i've, I've actually done one-on-one -on -one video calls with a number of people to help them do builds you know what i mean on new tanks there's times where i've done a build on a mech and i get in touch with my friends and say look there's a video give it a once over you know I still second that's my work. Mm. And I've been working for fucking ages. Yeah, I mean, Alan's just putting there, how long have you guys been vaping? I think it's about 12 years for me. I first started when the... Um, Seven years for me this year. Bigger lights came to the UK. You know, them stupid little ones that look like a cigarette with a tiny battery that lasted about an hour. Yeah. yeah. In pods. And I think that was about 12 years ago. I then had a slip up for... Went back on the stinkies probably for about two months. This is going back about 11 years. Um, and then just stopped again, just went back on the vaping. Um, it was it was the idea of those little batteries was just pissing me off so much because they would last about an hour. You'd have to have loads of them with you um, all the time. And it was just a nightmare. Um, but things like now, like these boosts, the up ends and things like that, it's just so much <coughs> get off them now because the technology's there. Um, it's just so much better. Yeah. Yeah, I spoke I spoke 10, 12 years for me when I first started vaping. Yeah. But as you say, the atomizers used to go, the batteries used to go. Oh, and they used to have them silica wicks in them as well, didn't they? Yeah. When they developed from the from those cigar lights to the sort of like the, was it was it ego but pens, wasn't it? Yeah. That's what I had the, the one that actually looked like a, a tab, and when you took a hit on it. The front used to glow red, so it looked as yeah, actually in the top. Yeah, yeah. Just just to fill that. that bit and how the little capsule inside yeah. screw. Yeah, fuck it. That, that's gone back some time. That is that's gone back a long time. Yeah, yeah. I measure mine by weeks. Fell out again, but it came. It doesn't matter, me. And, and 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 we see it quite often on live. People said, "Oh, I've had a bit of a slip up today. I had a, I, I, I had a couple of fags." Don't don't beat yourself up about it. Just remember the ones that you've not had. Rather than than the odd slip up, I'll be hundred percent honest. That I still sometimes enjoy a cigar when I go out for a beer with mates and stuff like that. It's not smoking to me. That's just a bit of a socialising. and have a cigar. I would never be become a smoker again. Um, based on what you said earlier on, uh, Chris, right. which I've been mean, meaning to say all night. <laughs> yes, a pack of tabs is going to cost you 10, 15, 20 quid, depending on where you live in the UK, Europe, whatever. The initial outlay to start vaping will be quite high. By the time you buy yourself a nice mod, you juice some extra coils. You know what I mean? If it needs batteries, you need your batteries and external charger. So your initial outlay date from day one is quite high. But once you've bought your device, yeah. your batteries, your charger, your coils, moving forward, you're only going to have to buy new juice, new coils, every now and again, new batteries. So you'll not see a saving straight away in your first week, two weeks, because you've got your initial outlay on what you need. But once you've bought what you need, the amount of money you're going to save, you pick up a bottle of this, Fruity Boom Grape, for instance, £15 a bottle, 100ml, add your two nicotine shots in, 
to make it the strength you need. Fine. That bottle of juice for £15 could last you anywhere from three to six days. Three to six I days. Yeah. 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 Could I mean, it's it, 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 cost as well. You've got something like the new <laughs> what are they, 20, 25 quid? 24 the new yeah, something yeah. like that. Now, if you walked into Pete's shop, you got yourself one of them and mm. let's say three bottles of, of salts another 12 quid so you're looking 36 quid there for a setup that's going to last you with with the juice for probably a couple of weeks because you're using salt so you're not going to be caning through it yes you might need to buy yourself a spare pod or whatever like that but you're looking your initial outlay for something like that is probably the equivalent of what three days worth of cigarettes and it's going to last you a couple of weeks and then it's just it it only becomes in my sort of in my head a lot more expensive to smoke is when you get a bit like what we are as soon as something new comes up in the market you're like oh i have to buy that you're straight on the keyboard and everything when it comes to the hobbyist side getting yourself off the cigarettes i don't think is expensive it's when you start it's when you start getting into your buying your mechs and i think oh a brand new tank's just come out i'm gonna have to buy that or a brand new mod or you want to buy something else and you start buying things just for the sake of buying things because they're nice this is like a magpie you see something shiny he's having it but I'm being good. <laughs> a 15 quid bottle of juice it could last you anywhere from six days, could even last you two weeks, depending on how much you've it. So, 15 quid for that one bottle and say it lasts you 10 days. See, average them 10 days, you buy 20 days at 10 pounds a day. There's a hundred pound. You've spent 15 quid on one bottle of juice that's lasting you 10 days. Instead of paying a hundred quid for ten packs of tabs, you know what I mean. You can see the logic there, but initially, your initial outlay will be slightly high. But like you see, what would be shop buying up there for twenty five quid? Buy four salts, or three three salts, three for a tenner. That that could last you two three days. So it's 35 quid straight away just on three salts plus your up end. Everything for your up end, your charger is in there. Yeah. I a couple more pods if you want is you know what I mean. So there's an extra eight quid. So you're looking about 50 quid straight away just on your pod pods and three three salts for argument's sake, or even a 50 mil short fill, depending on what you want. That's 50 quid. That's five mm-hmm. days of smoking, which could last yeah. what you've bought the last year, maybe it's a bit longer. Yeah, even Danny, you Carl, will, in, you in will see to, yeah. in response to your even question, there, Carl, right? cold juices. I've never heard that it's sweeteners no. in juices it's which sweet. kill coils. Um, they're obviously, um, either not very that knowledgeable, is- um, around what they're talking about, or they're just not very clever um no cold juices will make no impact um it's just ws23 that that's put in there it's just an additive which gives it the coldness um mm-hmm. no that should have no effect on a coil at all but heavy sweet juices do um don't you start early. has anybody any more questions before we bounce Never smoke, but enjoy vaping because I have a sweet tooth. Helps me with anxiety and other stuff. Kerry, my my, my missus uh, Karen, I'm sure I've told you before, has never never smoked in her life. She's got a couple of vape devices that sit next to her that she's still not me, and probably once a day, if that, if she's having a bit of a stressed moment, she'll pick one up, she'll blow a quick cloud, cough her lungs up, and then put it back down again, and then she'll leave it till the next day. Um, if if it helps you in with anxiety, with whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, they've been proven to be 95% safer than cigarettes. Um, nothing you put in your body is 100% safe. We're all terrible with our diets and things like that. So, um, Chris, have you told Chris and Sean about the bloke in the, in the curries the other day? In curries the other day? No. <laughs> send me a message, Donna. <laughs> Let me know. Tell us afterwards. Yeah. Whatever you whatever you use vaping for, whether that's for up with anxiety to occupy your hands because you enjoy the flavours, because you want to get and stay off the cigarettes, that's the important thing. That's what they're originally designed for. Then then do it. 
Uh, is that why you do it, Chucky? Huh? Is that why I do, do it? You vape to occupy your hands, Chucky. I do, mate. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I'm slowly coming down on my nick levels. I'm, I hover the things at a five and ten milligram now, depending on what what computer I'm using. My hands need occupied. <laughs> Don, if you need your hands occupied, log on to uh, like Amazon now or something. Get Scott's bank card. <coughs> get yourself that Bluetooth kettle that you wanted. What else did she want, Scott? I can't remember now. Or a brand new pair of trainers. Um, and there must be something else. You, you must want a nice handbag or something like that as well. Perhaps a new pair of jeans. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even noticed, has he? No, he doesn't. Oh. What a bell end. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to help people out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I don't know what do we do with that? We just get rid of that one, and we just get rid of that one as well. Then don't we? Don't we joke it? <laughs> oh, well, let's add him back. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Right, should we wrap it up then? <laughs> All right, we'll just we'll leave Chris then. <laughs> I'm not even here. <laughs> oh. Ready for Chris? <laughs> but no, thank you very much, everybody. I that's still, yeah, that's been from the start. Massive thank you. Um, again, massive thank you to Pete. For the platform, massive thanks to Danny Talbot and Jabs for the products that they've sent me to review. Hopefully, there will be more stuff coming our way to give you more reviews on. I know I've got things in the pipeline that I'll be doing on Wednesday night. I'm going to try and get some sorting, some other things sorted for me and the boys to do as well. Um, anybody wanting Ben and Bonanza's tickets? Message this page we're on now, Kyle Benders, to get your tickets before they go live tomorrow. There's 20 absolutely spectacular mystery boxes up for grabs. That means 26 times Sean's going to have to play that tune tomorrow. Yeah. 500 tickets in total, a two-pounder ticket. Don't forget you've got... um, <laughs> What's another? Dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> um, that wasn't me, that was Sean Promise <laughs> join, join the girls on Friday uh, For fun and games You could possibly have The legendary Mr Jones live On Saturday From Hold TV with the Mental Live Be sure to check that out On Sunday You're going to have Ricky and Peter With Raffle Hub and Hanky with Mingo on Monday, you're going to have myself with the amazing new juice by Mr. Jones, Miss Fruity. On Tuesday, you've got the Bell and Vapor, who's doing... <laughs> Bird, doing? Bird King. Bird King on yeah. Tuesday. And next Wednesday, I'm not too sure. I might do the Velocity or the Orbit on next Wednesday. Sorry, so Scott, Scott knew it wasn't me. Oh, no. There's only one bell end that does stuff like that, but I it's think it's, I, I would put scoot. <laughs> so it's time to say good night, God bless, take care, stay safe, keep it cloudy, and uh, have a great night. Have a great night. Do you want to give him one and no, Donna, football's not on. That's, that's finished. See you later. Bye, everyone.